What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here, my name's Luke. Right now I'm looking at a treasure pod that's asking us to inject treasure syringe. And so we're obviously going to need a few treasure syringes um, in order to inject all these pods. There are actually three of these pods here in the 5th Headhunter pack for Borderlands 2, called Sir Hammerlock vs. the Son of Cromorax. This is a little $3 add-on that just released on April the 15th. So this right here is the area and thing you're going to craft the treasure syringes with. You're going to need three of these as there are three different pods. I'm going to show you where all three of these pods are and what happens once you actually inject all three of these pods. From my experience so far, I've only ran a few tests. There is very good loot involved once you get to the third treasure pod. So we're going to need at least 30 iridium in order to craft all three treasure syringes. It is... Um, I believe 10 iridium each time and so we will need um, like I said 30 iridium it'll actually let you craft a fourth one but I don't think there are any more other than the the three treasure pods that I'm gonna show you in this video here the first one obviously is right up where you first start the main quest in this DLC um, right near where you meet hammerlock for the first time and once you inject the treasure syringe, it will make one adult Varkid who will start flying into this area back here. Obviously, in order to get access to the treasure syringe machine, you will have need to at least turn the water wheel on, I believe. I think probably it would be best if you finish the quest, but you'll probably be able to do it after you've turned on the water wheel. So now, this treasure Varkid is going to fly into this area over here, and eventually go into the ground. Don't get caught uh, looking at the treasure though and let all of these other Varkids uh, go ahead and level up because some of their island evolutions here are kind of dangerous. Luckily though, when they're small, you'll be able to one-hit KO these guys pretty easily, no matter who you're playing as, really. So take use of that while they're little to go ahead and kill them. Makes it a little bit easier. This uh, first treasure pod isn't really going to give you that much good gear. Every time I've run through here, it's given me two blue relics and a purple relic. Which really isn't that bad. I mean, purple relics are pretty good. It might be a good place to farm stockpile relics, for example. Because you're uh, the three or four times I've run through it, I think I've run through five times, actually. Um, you get uh, a purple relic every time, so that might be good for acquiring a stockpile relic if you don't want the... Bone of, or what is it, Blood of the Ancients, something like that, that also increases your health along with the stockpile route that it has. And, for example, I use uh, Sniper Zero quite a bit with a stockpile relic, and I definitely wouldn't want that to add anything to my health, because I often use a Survivor Calm combination that requires my health to be unadjusted. So what we're going to do here is kill all of these other guys in this little grotto, so that we can climb up here and inject the second treasure pod. This treasure pod is going to give us slightly better gear than the last treasure pod, but still not that great. We'll go ahead and follow this Varkid to where he's going to go as well. That's where it is on the map, guys, so you don't have any trouble finding this area. All three treasure pods are pretty close to each other, so it shouldn't be too hard to navigate. We're going to follow this Varkid though for a while until he goes into the ground and makes his treasure chest as well. There are some enemies over here on this side so be on the lookout for that and don't get ambushed. Sometimes these pirate guys can sneak up on you a little bit. Go ahead and kill these extra Varkids here in order to get the movement speed bonus so that I can follow the Varkid a little bit more easy or easily I should say. This Varkid will be landing soon though, and he doesn't park himself in quite as crowded of an area as the first Varkid does. He lands right about here, actually. He's going to make another treasure chest that spits out a decent amount of loot. It looks like there was one purple gun in uh, the non-chest loot. And then in here we were actually able to get an E-Tech weapon and another purple gun. So this is turning out really well so far. We've got good loot um, the whole way so far, really, um, if you include those purple relics as good loot. And when I think about it, a purple relic, especially if you're low in the game, 
if you maybe picked up Borderlands 2 Game of the Year pack or something and you haven't been playing for a lot for a while and you don't already have all your gear, this is probably a really good way to gear up. You're going to get quite a few purple guns and some purple relics and maybe even some class mods out of this as you'll see. And so it works out pretty well. Um, definitely a way to get some good gear. The third treasure pod is going to be over here a little bit past where the second treasure pod was. Uh, this is the area where you first jump back down to the main level when you're tracking Hammerlock uh, for the first time during the story quest. You're going to need to be on the right side of this waterfall, not the left side over there. And here is the third treasure pod, and we'll go ahead and inject this one as well. Obviously it's going to summon another adult Varkid. You can stand up here on the treasure pod and then do some little jumps off the Varkid. I was only able to get one jump off there, but one time I rode the Varkid for a little ways and I thought that was pretty cool. This Varkid uh, kind of leads you through some of these uh, pirates and tribes people that are over here. I guess it's actually more tribes people and craboids than pirates. But uh, he runs along this little beach here. I think just to kind of kind of kite you through some of these enemies, but uh, they're not tough or anything, so you don't really have to worry about these guys. I think I might have actually already killed some of these dudes on the way to the treasure syringe before I actually started recording. Not sure though. Anywho, um, this Varkid is going to head on this way, and he's eventually going to get back over to where almost the treasure syringe crafting machine is, um, and that works out pretty well. Kind of completes the circle, I guess. Um, I should note that you can definitely carry more than one treasure syringe at a time, as you guys probably saw. Alright, so here is the last treasure chest. We we got um, an E-Tech Vladoff rifle and a purple Hyperion sniper, along with a purple Hyperion shotgun. So some pretty good weapons there. They're all pretty decent. Uh, the E-Tech assault rifle is only alright. But you definitely make use with either of those two purple Hyperion guns. I'm going to show you another uh, run I did, this third chest, uh, after this. But I was going to go ahead and pick up all these weapons real fast just to shoot them. If you're looking for good gear when you start, I mean, for only 30 Iridium, you get quite a bit of gear in this little DLC. And so I think that's a pretty good trade-off because a lot of people probably have an overabundance of Iridium. And we were able, on this run, to get three pretty solid weapons and we got another purple weapon back at the second chest and an E-Tech weapon plus a purple relic as well so all this is looking pretty good and like I said after I show my gear and skill build here I'll be sure to show you another run I did where I actually got an orange item so that's what we're doing now the third treasure pod is spawning again another little Varkid's gonna jump out of that and run along the same route and this time, I'm actually going to get a Legendary Hunter class mod, which is, you know, an orange class mod, and it's a pretty good class mod overall for zero. And it shows that you were able to get orange items out of the chest pretty easily. This was my first run on this treasure syringe uh, kind of loop, actually. And this time, I got an orange item, and every time since then, I've only run it solo, mind you, I've gotten two... Uh, purple weapons or a purple weapon and an e-tech weapon when I open the chest plus a default purple weapon that spawns before you open the chest so you're getting some pretty good gear out of this guys and I recommend it if you're trying to farm up some gear if you're playing legitimately um, this is definitely gonna be a good way to help yourself out I do thank you guys very much for watching I do appreciate it if you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe please do so that would help me out a lot as well so here the Varkid is finally going to land, and we're going to see that treasure chest. Again, we got a purple Vladoff sniper rifle before we open the chest, and inside we got the legendary hunter. I do thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye guys, and, you know, good luck looting.